From Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live with CUBE coverage here in Seattle for KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, and this is Jason McGee, who's an IBM fellow, CTO of IBM's cloud platform, CUBE alumni, great to see you. Welcome back. Great to be here. I want to jump right in. You got a talk coming up. You got a uh, you know, show here that's doubling in size. The community has clearly resonates around Kubernetes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which is goodness for you know, the industry. We covered that last year, how people are starting to snap in and getting it, yep. putting it together, seeing visibility into value points where people can coexist and, and create value. But we're now going to the next level. Cloud's certainly been validated, hybrid cloud, on-premises and public cloud working. Yep. Customers are seeing it, uptake is there. Where's the big thread now that's being worked on? Because as going to the next level, it's an app market, we've also got some systems in there. Where do you see this coming together? I know you're giving a talk on this. Yeah, I mean, I think um, at the end of the day, people are trying to run applications. That's what like, this game has always been about. They have applications they're trying to build and run, that run their business, and I think as a community, this group of people here has been working together to build that platform, right? And I think it's been actually incredible to watch the last couple years, everyone rally around Kubernetes and containers. You know, that agreement amongst everyone happened so much faster than I yeah. thought it would. Like, I was pretty confident two or three years ago that Kube was the right path forward, but like, that everyone came there yeah. has been pretty amazing. I think what's happening now is, well, what about stateless 12-factor apps, what about functions? Like, what about the rest of the stack? And how do we all come together as a community to find that going forward? Talk about the role of functions and as compute, storage, and networking, that we call, we call the holy trinity of, of IT. Those things are changed with the cloud, but specifically compute. I mean, be nice, hey, spin up a server in 10 seconds. Yeah. Well, I need now milliseconds. Yeah. So you see functions in you know, Amazon with Lambda, these things are changing the game. Now with containers and functions, a dynamic is, is evolving pretty interestingly. Yeah. How do you see that evolving and the impact of, of that piece? Because compute certainly is goodness to a lot of things. Sure, I, I mean, I think functions is interesting because there's kind of two angles on it. There's like functions as a business model and functions as an architecture, right? And I think the architecture part, the programming model part is quite interesting. There are certain styles of applications, mostly event-oriented applications where that is a really natural way to solve a problem, right? And I think what platforms are all about is having the platform be rich enough that for a diversity of workloads that you're running, it's easy to consume the platform. And so us all agreeing on functions as a programming model and getting that into the platform and integrated with Kubernetes and integrated with Istio, I think will enable people to build apps much more quickly. And you see that's good right? signs right now, good yeah. signals, all yeah. green light. Yeah, like Knative Project is a great example of something new, right? Yeah, so Jason, I wonder if we could pull on that thread a little yeah. bit there, because the, 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 the holy grail has always been, I just want to worry about my application, right. and all that storage and networking stuff should, should, should yeah. just work. Right. Uh, you know, when we went to virtualization, it, it helped to a level, but that was just an abstraction. Right. What, what's the same and what's different about when we go to something like, like functions uh, compared to what we've been doing in the past? Well, I think there's a couple things. I mean, first, um, I think IT is under this kind of, we're trying to flip the model. Like for my whole 20 plus year career, IT's been mostly about infrastructure, and we started in infrastructure and we build our way up to apps. And what I think we've been trying to do with Kubernetes and with Cloud Native is flip it and start at apps and move our way down. Now, Kube was a good step in that journey, but it's still pretty raw, you know, it's still, you know, compute, you still have storage abstractions, you still have networking abstractions. What you want is for certain workloads to not worry about any of that. And functions, and also 12-factor systems like Cloud Foundry both play a role in if you fit within a paradigm, we can get rid of all of that for you. And that's what developers want. And it doesn't work for everything, right? Like not every application follows the rules. And I think, you know, Cloud Foundry has a particular opinionated view of 12-factor stateless apps. Functions have an opinionated view of event-oriented apps. We need those abstractions, and we need them to be done consistently with the rest of the platform, so you can kind of mix and match as you see fit. Right. Istio's gotten hot too, so yeah. service meshes are coming in. I know there's been some debate around how much does Kubernetes become or stay in core. Last year was a big conversation around you know, kind of a core and let things fill in around yeah. it. Yeah. Your thoughts on this trend and how people are thinking about it and what's being actually implemented. So, I, so my view is I think the community has done a good job on letting 
different projects fill in their role, but us all agreeing on the stack, right? I mean, ContainerD and Kubernetes and Istio and Knative, Prometheus, all these things are kind of slotting into their place. And I think, in general, we've done a good job of avoiding like one mega system design, right? And I think CNCF has done a good job of letting a few you know, competitors play with each other in the community and like make each other better. Well, right? Jason, you bring up such a great point there because one of the things, when we, it's reached this size and there's so many people here, there's the obvious comparison to is this OpenStack? Sure. Um, and yeah. you, you okay. just brought up one of the biggest things that I've seen is before it was like, okay, well, how many different pieces are in the core and I've got the big tent and all these things, but it all needed to live together as opposed to here, I've got all of these components and in many ways we're trying to decompose Kubernetes and we've got all these various pieces right. and they're not all dependent on each other and we don't all have to agree. There can be, uh, from observability, for uh, you know, you know, management, there's so many different ways that I could take the pieces and put them together. So, uh, you know, would love your viewpoint as to you know, what we're getting right now and you know, yeah. how, do, how do we not duplicate some of the sins of the past? Yeah, I, I mean, first off, it's, it's always something a community as vibrant as this has to keep their eye on, is yeah. like, is it all getting out of control? Um, so far, I think they've done it, we've all done a good job because we've been very application oriented and we've also been very focused on real usage. Like, most of the technologies we're talking about here, people are really using in production, at scale. Like, there's somebody who has real learning behind that, and I think it's driven good decision making. I think one of the maybe unsung um, things about Kubernetes is the extensibility model that's built into Kubernetes. Uh, the loose coupling that's built into this community has been incredibly powerful because it's allowed new things like Istio is a great example. Like, you know, we with Google and Lyft and others built Istio. We built it in this completely native experience inside of Kubernetes without changing anything about Kubernetes. Like, we were able to insert it into the system in a very natural way, and I think that allows us to experiment and and figure out where we need to go without it becoming this big mess, right? Scale's great, and that's a key, key value of the cloud. Security's number one. So what's your view on security? How's that going? What, what are end users experiencing? Obviously there's a security issue recently in Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, seems to work you know, from the recovery standpoint. Things are automated pretty quickly. But security's a concern, it's top of mind. You got, you got the, the security container boundary there. Yeah. The boundary within containers, you got the role of VMs. Kind of a new dimension. How do you view the security piece of Kubernetes? So I think uh, it's letting us solve those problems in, in completely different ways. You know, the holy grail for a long time has been, you know, get to standardized systems. And I think with containers, we're as close as we've ever been. I wouldn't say we're there, but we're awfully yeah. close <laughs> to having a model where we've got clean separation between the application layer and the system. We can plug in security, we can do image enforcement, we can do scanning, we can do uh, uh, firewalling and network stuff in very different ways. I mean, even Istio, like Istio, at the end of the day, a lot of what people are interested in with Istio is the security idea. That like I can do encrypted communications between microservices, and that's all kind of done for me in the infrastructure underneath. Um, so I think security is important. I think we're making it easier for developers to be successful building secure systems with platforms like we're talking about here, uh, because we're able to solve them in new ways. Right. We've got IBM Think coming up. The Cube will be there February, I think, 15th? 15th. 12th to the 15th. 12th to the 15th uh, yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah, First What are you time. guys going to be talking about at IBM Think for folks that are going or people might want to sign up? Plug for the Cube and, and IBM Think there for a quick second. What's, what's, the, what's going to be there? What's the focus within IBM? You guys got a lot of customers. What's their resonance to Kubernetes? How are they thinking about it? How are they consuming it? Can you share a little yeah, bit of what's coming Yeah, I mean, up, look, I at IBM we're, we're focused on uh, helping customers make that journey to yeah. cloud. And we're very pragmatic. Like yeah. we understand the complexity of the environments they have. They're building awesome new cloud native stuff. They have a bunch of existing middleware workloads. Like, so we're going to talk a lot about how we help you get there and how you handle yeah. the diversity of workloads. Um, we're going to talk a lot about technology, or about Kubernetes. We're yeah. going to do some fun stuff. We're going to do an awesome, uh, we have a session that's uh, all drones, flying drones demo of how Kubernetes works. <laughs> like all live, you know, maybe somebody will get hurt, I'm not sure, but we're going to do some awesome <laughs> the tech demos. Right are going big yeah, time right. on that one. It, it's interesting, one thing, we, we've heard a little bit of discussion about IoT here, but not yeah. a lot about AI when it yeah. comes here. I'm wondering if you might be able to help connect the dots for us. Yeah, I mean, so, so I'd say two things. AI is its own, own domain, yeah. right? Um, I think the intersection with AI and, and a conference like this is Kubernetes is the platform for AI too. 
I mean, at IBM, we run all of Watson on Kubernetes, right? We run all of our machine learning and deep learning systems on Kubernetes. So it is becoming the platform for AI developers as well to be able to be successful taking advantage of all the compute resource, you know, custom hardware and stuff that's available in cloud. So I think there's a strong intersection of this being the platform for those workloads. Right. So on the cloud native stuff, we know we've been covering you guys for a long time. Yep. You had um, SoftLayer was an acquisition, but even before SoftLayer, you had Bluemix. Yep. Uh, Bluemix was developing a lot of cloud native technologies. Yeah. How is um, um, the result of the years of investment around Bluemix changing or evolving with the rise of Kubernetes and the rise of these new sets of microservices because you got operations impact, you got developer impact, you got the simplicity model you were just talking about. How is, how is IBM bringing that to bear? Can you share some inside commentary yeah. on what's happening? So, you know, we've, over the last two plus years, we've been building out the platform I've been describing to you in yeah. our cloud. Um, you know, we made a decision that Kubernetes was the foundation, both for the existing apps to modernize and for new things. And then we've been taking our serverless platform, our Cloud Foundry investment, our DevOps tools, and bringing them all together. I mean, my goal is to build that new platform. You know, as an old WebSphere guy from 20 years ago, <laughs> I saw the value in, yeah. in the industry rallying around a common platform for apps. I think we can do that again. I think we've made so much yeah. progress. Uh, and on IBM, we're trying to drive that forward, both in our products and in these yeah. community interactions. Talk about that dynamic you mentioned. We were talking before we came on camera here about how I was saying it's a systems world now. People who have a systems yeah. mindset seem to resonate well with cloud. You yeah. mentioned the app server days, those glory days. Mm -hmm. There's a renaissance of those two dimensions going on. Just share yeah. your thoughts on it. I think it's an interesting uh, insight. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. Cloud is, is absolutely a systems kind of problem. It's, you know, how do you bring hardware and networking, uh, abstractions around yeah. compute, all these pieces together, and do it in a way that's composable. I think that's like the really interesting part of cloud is like, you have a hundred things that all on their own have to have solid capability and then you should be able to mix and match them. And you can't do that unless you take a systems view, right? Like that yeah. security is the same, the user experience is the same, APIs are the same. And it's been actually really challenging to do that in the context of open source because every open source project has its own viewpoints on how you do authentication, authorization, users, and like getting all this stuff to work together is hard. Yeah. Um, and so I do think we have a little bit of a resurgence of people who understand how to build complete end-to-end -end systems. And then once you enable that, you have some horizontally scalable capabilities, you got data and kind yeah. of virtual specialization. You can specialize and you can have some so common So now at base. the top above that is the, the app server kind of vibe that yeah. you went through. Yeah. That's kind of happening now, you see yeah. that. Which, I mean, Absolutely, and we, and we see it for our clients and ourselves. Like, all of IBM Cloud, we've moved to run on the same platform. Like we run yeah. all of our services on Kubernetes. And so we've kind of used the platform ourselves yeah. to prove out they can handle this diverse set of workloads. This right. is really disruptive. I think that's a great angle. Jason, yeah. thanks for sharing on theCUBE. I really want to get that here. out. Cloud is disrupting IT, open source communities, and the developer market with horizontal scale and new kinds of application environments. Certainly exciting. Yeah. Thanks for having us. We are thanks KubeCon, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Forrest, Stu Miniman, day one. Stay with us for more interviews after this short break.